Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Billy the Bat Boys Corner. Today we have former Pittsburgh Pirate and New York Met, Vic Black. Thank you for coming on. Absolutely, Billy. Thank you for having me. In 2009, the Pirates drafted you in the first round. What was your reaction when you found out that they drafted you? Uh, elated. I mean, it, it's certainly something you tell yourself, and I had a dream and a, a goal to do that and get drafted, which it's all up to the team's um, call. But when it actually happens is a whole other story. It's like, yeah, this is going to be reality. And then you get a phone call, like, hey, we just took you. I'm like, wait, what? This is for real. Uh, in 2013, you made the AAA All-Star game for the Indianapolis Indians. What was it like playing with some of the biggest prospects in the game? It was fun. Um, come 2012, everything started clicking in AA and then uh, went to Indy, like you said, in AAA in 2013. And you kind of stay in the International League, except for the All-Star game. It's the only league, I think, where they take both AAA leagues and combine them. So you play against each other. So I got to see guys from the Fall League that I played against the winter before. Um, but it was, a, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was kind of like college. So you got these great players, tons of scouts. They're here to see you. And so to me, that was always something to be excited about, not be nervous about. So it was a blast. Got to meet a lot of cool guys. All right, during July of that season, the Pirates promoted you to the big leagues. Can you tell us your call-up story? Yes, we were in, um, God, where were we? Uh, Gwinnett, I do believe Gwinnett. And uh, I hadn't pitched in two or three days. We go into the clubhouse one night. Grilly had just gone down. They didn't know why elbow was bugging him. Uh, turns out it was a flexor strain. I was sitting there, I was thinking, man. This could be it, because one of the other guys was having a good year, too, but he had just got called up for a couple weeks, only got one appearance, and I had yet to get called up. Um, and I thought I would the end of the year before, having not been on the 40-man kind of stop. But um, the next morning, I was in the shower, and my roommate, Duke, he, like, picked up the phone, and I guess it was Dean, our manager. Um, I got out of the shower, he's like, hey, you need to call Dean. He won't stop calling us. I was like, oh, okay, whatever. So I get on the phone, he's like, hey, Vic, uh, no time for a funny story or a cool prank, but you need to pack your bags. you got to get to the airport. You're going to D.C. And I was like, what? I'm really going. This is it. So, uh, yeah, I hopped in the airport, got to D.C., taxi cab dropped me off outside. They've got, like, a village area with, like, bars and stuff outside. And I had to walk in my suit and luggage through the whole thing. There's tons of fans because it was, like, two hours prior to the game that I landed. So it was a bit chaotic, but, man, nothing like stepping on a field and throwing a major league ball for the first time. Well, you made your major league debut and recorded your first strikeout. Who was your first strikeout, and what was it like to get it? Ian Desmond. Should have been Jason Worth. Full wouldn't swing it, another fastball. But, um, no, it was good. I, I, think I, I think I threw him three fastballs. They all cut, and they were all 98 or 99. He swung through all three. Um, and then I saw him several times down the road, especially with New York, too, okay. uh, being in the same division. But it was, it was a blast. We only had one out. Um, I'd gone three days without throwing in a game. Which not used to as a closer in the minors, throw practically every other day. And uh, again, Jenmar Gomez was struggling his first inning out. And he was supposed to throw the last three because he hadn't thrown. And they get two outs, and all of a sudden it's like, Vic, you got to get going. And I was taking a chart at the time. It's like, what is going on? Ran out there. Russell Martin comes up. He's like, so what do you got? Fastball, curveball, change? I was like, no, nah, just fastball, curveball. He goes, okay, worth up. We're gonna we're gonna start off away. And I was like. Uh, can you just set up down the middle and I'm going to try to throw it as hard as I possibly can. And he chuckled and he goes, Vic, we're in the big leagues. We don't do that. And I go, yeah, but I don't know how to do anything else. So he got back there and just set up in the middle, tried to throw it through him. But yeah, Desmond was uh, the first victim. So wow. hopefully more to come. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of August, the Pirates traded you to the Mets for, as a player to be named later in the John Buck and Marlon Bird trade. How exciting was it to join a, the team that originally drafted you? Man, that didn't actually resonate till the off season. It didn't click because out of high school, like uh, I was drafted by them, and it had just been a long time because I had just started pitching, so it wasn't a huge interest of mine to go then with not knowing anything. But um, yeah, the trade was bittersweet. Uh, I think every player, when they get drafted, hopes and has this desire of sticking with the team that drafts them and playing ten years and walking away from it, just smile on your face, but. Situations go down. Pittsburgh was trying to make the playoffs. They needed another bat. Marlin was hot all year. It was a good trade, a veteran catcher, too, to help in case Martin got hurt. Um, so to get to be a part of a trade like that was encouraging and honoring in the sense of these are two established guys that a team wants for a month and I'm worth giving up. So And the Mets um, welcomed me. Terry put me in situations that I wouldn't have been put in in Pittsburgh at that time because of an established bullpen. 
So it gave me a chance to be around some older guys, David Arzma, Latroy Hawkins, ended up being one of my good friends, uh, helped me out a ton. But yeah, it was it was definitely an opportunity that I welcomed. On September 24th, you uh, you earned your first major league save against the Reds. Uh, being a rookie, what was going through your head as run through that bullpen? Man, all I remember, um, I knew I was going to be the guy up that night if, in fact, there was a save opportunity because Latroy had thrown the two previous days. And he was closing for us with um, Parnell had been hurt, so he was out the second half of the year. And Latroy had actually gone in. I think he told me, he's like, TC, if we need a save, let Vic do it. He needs to figure out how to do this. And I was like, you told him what? But at the same time, like, that's what I've been doing in the minor leagues. So you train for it every day. You prepare that way. And so going from a setup guy, which is what I was doing for Latroy, then into that closer, it's just another inning. Um, and Ricky Bonus, phenomenal bullpen coach, still over there with the Mets. Talked to him frequently. He's like, Vic, no different. Three more outs. That's all you got. It's just the same three outs. And what I was doing setup-wise, if you don't get through that, you never even get to the closer position. So it was, it was relaxing. Got out there. I think I went. Strikeout, strikeout, second one was a pass ball, dude got the first, and then uh, chopper back to me and rolled a double play, which was very provoking. Like, I mean, nerves. I have no problem pitching in front of 50,000 people, but you hit me the ball first time out, and I got to turn a double play to second. I don't think I remember letting go of the ball. I just was like, don't, don't do it, don't sail this mug. But no, it worked out really well. Uh, now, recently you've been training with the Top Velocity program. How has that helped you, and do you recommend that program for other pitchers yes absolutely um I got a chance to meet Brent through a fellow teammate from last year Cody Hall who's now with the Rays he's in Durham uh, hopefully going to get back to the big leagues again kind of resurrected his career as well went through some of the same struggles he's like Vic you got to check this guy out Brent is one of the most knowledgeable baseball guys I know and he genuinely cares about every player that comes through there whether they're a high schooler that didn't make their high school team or a big league guy that is struggling to get back. We're all on the same playing field, and he wants to do the best thing for you and give you the best opportunity. Now, it's not quick. I mean, it took some work. It was it was 30 weeks of committed, Vic, you got to be on this. This is how this is going to work. You take a day off, you're going to you're gonna slide. Yeah. It's like, okay, uh, I'll believe you and trust you, but it was phenomenal. Um, I recommend Top V, especially as far as strength building goes and endurance. I mean, it, he sets you up to be the most powerful, explosive athlete you can be, and that's what we want to be, especially as pitchers. Uh, this season you're with the independent New Jersey Jackals. What are you trying to do in order for catch teams' attention? Man, I want to get outs, but uh, the biggest thing for me has always been health. As long as I've been healthy, I've been one of the best everywhere I've played, including the big leagues, and I don't take that lightly because that's a tough place to pitch. The minors is a tough place to pitch. There's great players. This is a tough place to pitch. These are still good players. Either someone hasn't seen them yet, or they're like me. They're coming back. They had an injury, some unfortunate situation, got them off track, something like that. So um, I don't take this lightly. This is the same as any other position I could be in right now, whether I'm pitching in front of 30,000 people or 200, 100. It doesn't matter. I have to show that I'm healthy. I have to show that I can still execute pitches. Um, outside of that, man, this is – this is the coolest experience I've had from the standpoint of you hear so many times about guys going back and saying, man, I wish I had known that. I would do it differently. Well, I'm still 29, and I'm getting another opportunity having known everything before. So um, more excited this time around, I think, than even when I got drafted. And last question, what advice would you give to a younger player? Oh, enjoy failing. Not to the extent that we welcome it. Um, but if we take failures as something to grind our gears and get us down and sulk through and not overcome, that, that's the only way you learn anything. Um, success doesn't teach you anything because the feedback is good. And we learn through adversity and bad feedback. Like if I give up a home run, well, I'm going to learn more from that than if I struck out three guys like, well, I did that, but what do I take away with it? Well, I executed nine good pitches, but I don't know how to do anything different than what I just did. And it may not work tomorrow. So, yeah, the adversity. Uh, welcome it with open arms because it will be your biggest friend. All right, thank you. Yeah, dude, absolutely. Thank you, Billy.